Everybody knows that Breath of the Wild is a masterpiece. The moment you walk out of that cave and see that opening cutscene, you know you're about to get sucked into one of the greatest open world adventures in video game history. And as years went on, the legacy of Breath of the Wild as a boundary breaking next generation experience kept on keeping on while it remained the go to reference for a perfect open world game. And I think when people described it, they talked about it a lot like, Oh, it feels so cool to explore this open world and discover all these secrets, and it's so nice to interact with the environment and people, just getting to experience the world of Hyrule. But it always seemed like everyone left out the part that's more like, Kill them! Kill them all! Blow their shit up! Show me your war face! Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. <laughs> you know, I just wish there was a little more of that in the discussion. Because it was the breakneck batshit baboonery of Breath of the Wild that elevated it beyond the less flattering status of Death Stranding meets Cooking Mama. Actually, hold on, that sounds kick-ass. But if they were gonna make a sequel, the only thing I could ever ask for would be for them to do all these things... ...but better. Tears of the Kingdom. Gorgeous, immaculate, and a shoe in for at least 60% of this year's Game Awards. Referring to the standard template of I'm not a furry, but... Any game that starts off by shoving this god-tier hunk of baloney in my face knows how to get my attention. And from there, the less sexy but equally exciting allure of badass game mechanics is more than enough to keep me dialed in. But between rail grinding, sword building, and Korok martyring, the number one question on my mind was... Can they do that? Can they seriously just let you stick a trampoline onto a shield? Can they code a physics engine that can handle this rickety-ass contraption I built? Oh. Dude, it's working! Aw, oh, shit! Ah, screw it. Can they make a dude that's this hot? What are you people doing? That first few hours of gameplay was just me trying to keep my brain in one piece as it processed one mind-blowing feature after another, which proved to be a wasted effort with the revelation that, oh yeah, that's like maybe 1% of the game. And the funny thing is, I felt the exact same way playing Breath of the Wild for the first time, cause back then I was well past mesmerized at map a third of this size. That feeling of freedom and boundless exploration was so strong in that game, and what really tied it together was the constant string of shrines, items, and encounters throughout the world. And following a zigzag of monster forts wouldn't be half as exciting without a vibrant collage of enemies across the map. That feeling of absolute freedom to explore every fight, the fact that you were always overflowing with combat options, made every encounter a feast of possible scenarios. Dodges, time stops, parries, weapon throws, all added on top of an already pretty robust combat system, made sure that you were never getting bored in a fight. And as you'd get better and better at it, you'd figure out more tricks, experiment with unique mechanics, until the goal was less about beating the enemies than devising some crazy-ass Henox execution for the Breath of the Wild subreddit. But that same approachability that made dumbass stunts so easy to pull off also gave the game a kind of awkward difficulty curve. Cause the enemies were sure neato, but they got a little less so when you fought them for the 50th time with no changes other than a small health boost. They kinda lose the ability to surprise you at that point, and I don't think there was enough variation between their little fortresses to make up for that. The only time they'd do anything halfway unpredictable was after you disarm them, at which point their attacks would knock you down a quarter of a heart at best. And you kinda started to realize that yeah, you can do some pretty sweet-ass shit in Breath of the Wild, but the coolness ceiling was, for the most part, entirely limited to the intention of the developers. When a goblin fort had explosive barrels, you shoot the barrels and every enemy in a radius of 100 feet dies. Which is cool, but that wasn't your barrel explosion, that was the line of dominoes that someone else set up for you to shoot a bomb arrow at. If you wanted to create some elaborate monster death trap, you could sure do that, but, you know, it's gonna be easier 11 times out of 10 to just spam click the darn thing to death. And this, the combination of approachable combat and a suite of mechanics that made any sort of experimentation a massive pain in the ass, was what hurt Breath of the Wild more than anything else. But with Tears of the Kingdom expanding all these mechanics, experimentation isn't just easier, it's the new normal. Now I don't have to take dirt from some stone thorn ass bone butt, get that weak shit out of here. And you know I never leave the house without my high grade stealth armor. Ah shit. And I'm bringing my own barrels to the party, darn it. Oh. Uh, yeah, nah, peace. This complete overhaul in mechanical depth creates so many opportunities for totally ridiculous interactions. My favorite's gotta be the ballistic missile eyeball, but it's a close contest with the Plants vs. Zombies hypno true. And on top of that, one feature that I'm so happy to see is the addition of throwing, which turns choo-choo jellies from useless crud globs to elemental grenades. Oh, and the weapon combinations. I can't believe that the game asserts the stick-pasting mechanic so confidently that my attention immediately shifts from how stupid it is to coming up with the best way to break it. 
On top of these new abilities, the fact that they reworked every item's uses from the first game and added a hundred more does so much to reinvent the game's formula. And it gives you an endless toolbox of options to approach any encounter with. It makes me constantly pumped up for the next time I get to turn a forest goblin into a science experiment. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I could go for an apple. Yeah, this game got a whole lot harder. The enemies are not pushovers anymore, I swear, you gotta respect the progression or some goddamn terrifying hand monster is gonna eat your ass like mustard on toast. You'll be walking around in the forest or something like that and a freaking tree comes to life, they got these alien isolation ass wall crawler dudes, giant goblins, even crap ass bow goblins will catch you off guard with a good flank. With the invention of enemies that have more than three moves, Tears of the Kingdom finally gives you a reason not to mindlessly button mash your way through encounters and actually engage with its freshly upgraded mechanics. And if nothing else, bow goblins are a lot more exciting when they get picked up by a bird monster out of nowhere. I'm just so impressed by the simplicity of it all too. That you're always being presented with a million opportunities, but never in a way that's overwhelming. It makes the flow of the game so much cleaner, especially since whenever you kill an enemy, you don't just get their weapon, but also the pieces and parts of future weapons. So now instead of getting marooned with a bunch of 5 damage wiffle bats, you can just throw a giant horn on the end and boom, it's a kill stick. Or you can grab a shitty icicle from the snow zone, take it on down to the desert and become a deathbringer warlord. You don't have to rely on lucky finds to get good weapons, because the only limit on your damage output is your own willingness to experiment. Here, get this. I'm gonna let you in on one of my genius inventions, alright? You ready? You can't tell anyone about this, I'm trusting you, alright? Okay. Tomato Club. Think about it. But even having the freedom to just craft a Korok leaf out of nowhere makes such a difference when the alternative used to be lugging one around in your weapon slot all game. And that's what it's all about, yeah? Freedom. Whether you're running through a field, experimenting with recipes, or getting the ever-loving dog water beat out of you by a Lionel, you've always got the freedom to find a new approach and make your own story. Cause with the abilities to paste weapons together, throw shit at monsters, reverse time, ride rockets, and build my patent-pending millipede mobile, Tears of the Kingdom proves itself to be more than just a sequel to one of the greatest adventures in video game history. Cause now, more than ever before, that adventure's in your hands. And I know you've got it in you to make it something special.